plasma layer, creation of artificial ionizing clouds above the Earth, defense system for discriminating between objects in space, nuclear-sized explosions without radiation. HARP is described as a research instrument for studying the ionosphere, an ionospheric heater, or IRI, of which many exist, but HARP is special. The ability to focus energy and the unprecedented amount in gigawatts, billions of watts, makes it literally millions of times more effective at heating the region about 120 miles above the Earth's surface. The atmosphere has most of its density below 30 miles altitude. The ionosphere is the very thin layer above that absorbs dangerous ultraviolet radiation and makes life possible on Earth. There is very little mixing normally between the two layers, but disturbances in the ionosphere translate to changes in weather, such as normally occurring sunspots and the solar wind. The main idea behind HARP is the ability to direct electrons along the naturally occurring magnetic field lines of the Earth and accelerate them to near the speed of light to form a protective shell of highly excited particles that not only block communications worldwide, but destroy missiles in their trajectory as they descend from space. The effects can be localized by punching a hole through the ionosphere to superheat an area 30 kilometers in diameter into a plasma shield. Any missile or aircraft would be destroyed that tried to fly through the plasma, which is the fourth state of matter. A hole in the ionosphere above an enemy country could kill by allowing solar radiation to strike the surface unhindered. Weather modification could also be used as an instrument of warfare by manipulating the electric jet and the jet streams that dictate climate. The publicly stated aim is C3, Command, Communication, and Control. The margin of victory in war is to block signals in the ELF extremely low frequency range can be generated by HARP and heard anywhere in the world and are used for earth penetrating tomography, basically finding enemy submarines and underground bases. Dr. Richard Williams says the high energy experiments will generate the equivalent of the output of 10 to 100 large power generating stations and that, quote, tests of these kinds could cause irreversible damage. According to Dr. Elizabeth Rauscher, quote, the ionosphere is prone to catalytic reactions, so if a small part is changed, a major change in the ionosphere can happen. HARP documents admit that a thousand-fold greater amounts of energy can be released in the ionosphere than injected. Stanford University experiments beaming radio waves into the magnetosphere detected the signals halfway around the world. Some were amplified a thousand times. David Yarrow states, quote, Earth's axial spin means that a burst lasting more than a few minutes will slice through the ionosphere like a microwave knife, producing not a hole, but a long tear an incision. HARP documents describe intentionally trying to get a runaway effect in the ionosphere. Quote, the instabilities commonly studied are approaching their maximum radio frequency energy dissipative capacity, beyond which the plasma process will run away until the next limiting factor is reached. The first atomic weapons testing was done without knowing if the chain reaction would stop or keep going. Dr. Oppenheimer admitted years later that, quote, the government knew that the scientists didn't know. The decision to pulse several gigawatts of energy into the ionosphere could cross a threshold. Walter Richmond wrote of an account of such an event in a book entitled The Lost Millennium. The event began with a solar tap, a planetary short circuit. Quote, the surge of power became an avalanche. At the pole, in the vertical plane of the Earth's magnetic field, where the winds of magnetism would not rise to blow it out, one trillion watt seconds of energy unleashed their fury on the polar cap in the first flash. Even as it discharged, the ionosphere was recharged from the solar furnace. The first flash became a mighty roar that poured an increased and now steady stream of energy through the now stabilized short circuit. Kilocubit after square kilocubit of frozen wasteland boiled. Watt after watt of ever-increasing avalanched energy lit the polar cap with a glare that had never before been seen. Earth's an electrical motor. When the motor began to run wild, it would increase its rotational speed, 
Eventually, the Earth would explode from increased centrifugal stress. The HARP project manager describes the experiment of Earth penetrating capability using frequencies of 10 to 20 hertz pulses per second, or maybe 1 hertz, 1 cycle per second type waves. This range of frequencies are the same dominant frequencies within which the human brain normally operates. The military, particularly the Navy and Air Force, have extensive research on the negative effects of extremely low frequency radiation. These effects have been well documented, but the government easily deflects public concern by playing down the effects and minimizing the risks. This is the same method used for other military systems, including nuclear weapons tests, LSD experiments, and radiation experiments, all carried out on unknowing subjects under the guise of national security. The environmental impact statement has been falsified as to the true nature of the weapon system, its capabilities, and its possible fallout.